Let's, uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. God, we love you. We thank you so much for this day. Um, again, Father, we cherish this day as a gift from you. And uh, we ask for your help, Lord, as we steward this day uh, in a manner that will bring you glory. Uh, we just pray, Lord, that each of us will do our very best to make a difference and to see you honored by everything that we, we do today. We love you and we thank you for that in your strong name. Amen. All right. So we are continuing in our series on uh, in need of direction. And today we're actually starting um, uh, a message part of this, this series that will uh, go on for about five five weeks so we're going to be talking about uh god's process god's process um, of giving us direction uh, so let's go to proverbs 3 5 and 6 um, trust in the lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit or acknowledge him and he will make your paths or your steps straight he will direct your paths. Uh, a path or a step is a process to a desired destination. Um, if I want to get uh, to Dr. Micah's office, I, I have to take one step uh, first, and then that step will lead to another step, which will lead to another step. And if I if I stay in that process of one step after another going in that direction I'm gonna I'm gonna get there um, when I was when I was about eight or nine years old uh, me and a friend of mine uh, named named Corey Shipman um, we had this amazing idea we were the best of friends from the time we were four years old and uh, we we just we did everything together and one day while drinking coca-cola and eating pizza at his house we had this bright idea why why would we ever buy coca-cola again when the ingredients are on the back <laughs> Yeah, so we just decided we were going to make Coca-Cola. Um, and, and so we, uh, uh, we went and we gathered all the ingredients we could find, uh, which we figured or realized we didn't have a whole lot of, but surely it wouldn't hurt to substitute a few things out of the kitchen, right, for, for these. And uh, as, <laughs> as you can imagine, uh, we, we made nothing that resembled Coca-Cola, uh, but I do still remember the taste <laughs> from when I took that first drink of whatever it is we, we concocted. Um, to make Coca-Cola, you have very specific ingredients that you have to follow step by step, process by process, and there is a lot of that that is a secret recipe, right, that we will never know. So even if you had all the ingredients on the back of the bottle, the other that is listed in there, you will not know. Uh, and so sort of an impossible thing. Well, in the ingredients of our life, in, in the ingredients of God's direction for our life. There are a lot of different, a lot of different pieces to that, right? And, and it's, not like, it's not like that God just says, boom, there's the plans for your life lived out in full. No, it's sort of one day at a time, one ingredient at a time that He adds to the layers of our life and takes us in the direction that He wants us to be. So let me just give you a few um, daily reminders about God's, about God's direction. Uh, number one, and this is really stated in in, in Proverbs 3. Uh, but it is so important for us to remember that we have to trust the Lord and His process for our life. We have to trust the Lord and His, His process uh, for our life. Can, can I just say um, that, wow, that is a lot easier to say than to do. Uh, it is certainly a lot easier to preach or to teach this stuff than it is to live this stuff, right? It seems so simple. Just trust in the Lord 
and his processes. But I think that it's, it's why it sort of clarifies the, uh, what that means in the next statement when it says, and lean not on your own understanding. Because that is sort of our natural uh, bend, right? We, are, we, we find ourselves leaning on our own understanding. Uh, <laughs> at least I do, right? But God, I, I need you to see this my way. And, and even I find myself, even in prayer, uh, so many times trying to convince God to see things my way rather than bringing myself to a place of submission and trusting Him and His ways. Uh, and, and so it's so important, no matter how long you've been in, in serving the Lord, no matter how long you've been in the faith, to go back to that simplistic principle of, of asking yourself, am I truly trusting Him? Am I trusting Him? Am I leaning into His plans or am I trying to get Him on board with my plans? Am I leaning on my own understanding? Uh, someone once said, and I, I think I heard John Maxwell say this, and I'm not sure if it was original with him uh, or someone else, so I'll just give John credit, and when you tell it, you can give me credit. <laughs> now, uh, success does not happen in a day. It happens daily. All right, success does not happen in a day. It, it, it happens daily. Uh, and this is so good for each of us. You will never wake up one morning and all of a sudden find yourself standing in the fulfillment of God's plan for your life. Now, you're going to get there one step at a time, uh, daily, getting up and trusting His processes, uh, committing yourself to the journey daily uh, is how you step into to God's, God's plans. Uh, a few years ago, I, I was sitting around a campfire with some brothers in Christ, and we were talking, and one of the guys had uh, just ran a ultra marathon of, of uh, I believe this one was 60-something uh, miles, not kilometers, but miles. Um, it was pretty impressive, and we're, we're all sitting around listening to, to him tell his stories of this ultra marathon and losing toenails and uh, coming to the place of, of just complete exhaustion and cramps where his legs were just convulsing. And uh, listening to these stories, we're just all like, that sounds so painful. We want to do it. Right. Um, actually, not a not an ultra marathon, but we we said that what what if we all ran a marathon, just a marathon? I mean, not the ultra, because twenty six point two miles, like forty two kilometers, uh, is still a pretty great feat, right? And so, why don't we do that? And so, man, we're fired up. I mean, at that at that campfire that night. Uh, yeah, you would have thought we were ready for the Olympics. I mean, it was amazing. Um, and the, the only problem is, is that all of us except Jason, who, who had just ran the ultra marathon, um, had not really ran in a very long time. Uh, as in, maybe never. <laughs> right? And so, but we say, hey, let's, let's do this. Like the Nashville Marathon's coming up in, in six or seven months. We can do this, right? We're in pretty good shape. Let's, let's make this happen. And uh, so we're like, yeah. And we get up the next day and we're all like, you know, everyone just start training. Maybe we'll get together like the Vice Balboas. Maybe we'll get together once a week and do a run together. All uh, right. But we'll, we'll train on our, by ourselves. And um, I get up that, that first day. And um, I mean, remember, 26.2 miles, 42K. And I get up and, and I start running about three quarters of a mile. Uh, three quarters of a mile, I'm looking around, making sure no one's looking, and I'm like, I think I'm going to walk home. <laughs> like, I think this is about it for the day. And, and I really do think I stopped about, about uh, a quarter of a mile short of a mile 
on the first day. I mean, that's all I had in me is one less than one mile. Uh, and I called my friend Landon. Hey, man, how'd you do? Dude, I got two miles in today, man. It's a good day. We've got to keep going. We're encouraging each other. And um, so the next day, get up and run and go a little over a mile. By the next week, was up to two miles. The next week, got up to three miles. And every week, we just try to run a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And, and seven months later, seven months later, uh, we ran the Nashville Marathon. We went from six months not being able to run a mile to six or seven months later being able to run a marathon. Now, I, I will tell you, a marathon is not fun. Uh, it, it, it was all out war is what it, what it felt like. Uh, but there was a great sense of accomplishment in, in going over that, that finish line. But you don't wake up one day, for most of us, and, unless you have Mr. E's athletic ability, and say, I'm going to go run a marathon today, right? It just, it, it, it doesn't happen. You commit yourself to every day trying to, trying to work out and push yourself a little bit harder towards that goal that is out there uh, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna make it happen. Um, so success doesn't happen in a day, it happens daily, and you have to trust the process. Uh, secondly, you have to be willing to fight discouragement. Uh, I was gonna say, like, don't get discouraged. But that's a little bit impossible, right? It's like when you know 26 miles is your goal and you're like, you can't even breathe after three quarters of a mile. It's like discouragement is coming. Uh, but you have to be willing to fight discouragement. In all of our lives, there will be seasons of discouragement. Uh, there will be seasons when we question, God, are you even up there? Are you listening? Do you care about my life? Do you have a plan for my life? Uh, does my life even matter to you? Uh, you're going to feel that kind of discouragement, and you have to make a decision that I am going to fight against uh, that kind of discouragement in my life. I think that's why, why Paul said in Galatians 6, let us not become weary in doing good because like he wouldn't tell us don't become weary if there wasn't a temptation to get weary. Like he wouldn't tell you don't wear yourself out if there wasn't a temptation for you to get burnt out or worn out on life's journey. Uh, for at a proper time you'll reap a harvest if you don't give up. You have to fight against uh, this discouragement. Uh, again, a, a personal illustration. Um, uh, when we had our first daughter, uh, I, had a, I had a few years where I, I'd always, always been in somewhat of, of um, I don't know, if decent shape. I was in okay shape throughout my uh teenage life and, and young adult life, get married, you have a kid, and like three years or, or two years after my, my our first daughter was uh, born, I'm walking up the stairs one day and I can't hardly breathe. Like literally, I'm carrying her up the stairs to bed. I can't even breathe. I'm, I'm like so just completely worn out. I weighed about 50 pounds more than I weigh right now. Uh, and I, I had this epiphany. I had this thought, you know what? One day you're not going to be able to walk this girl down the aisle to get married. If you can't even walk her up the stairs right now as a two year old, you better do something about this. Right. And so whatever it was that happened at the top of those stairs today hit me really hard. And I'm like, forget this, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. So I may, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to try to uh, be, live a more healthy life. Right. And the only problem was, is um, that was like two weeks before Thanksgiving, <laughs> not an easy time to start 
a, a diet change, right? Or a lifestyle change with your eating. Not an easy time at all. Uh, and, and, but, but I did it. And, and when Thanksgiving rolled around, uh, it was literally one of the hardest, hardest times of my life because I'm watching all this stuff that I literally love. Like it is my favorite meal. Turkey and dressing is my favorite meal. Um, but you know what? I, I, I fought temptation. Actually, I had my mouth wired shut. Not really, but I felt like doing that. It was very, very difficult. Uh, and then Christmas came after that. But I kept having this recurring thought. You know what? Uh, I didn't get here. It, it wasn't. Uh, it, it didn't take me a day to get here. Like it was a, a long journey to get here, and it's going to be a long journey to get through it. And if I'm going to do this, I've got to. I've got to fight through this temptation and this discouragement, and I got to. I got to make it happen. Uh, and I remember one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. It felt like was making it through Thanksgiving and Christmas without fudging on this on this new uh, lifestyle diet strategy for my for my life and fitness strategy. Um, I remember the discouragement was so great during those holidays and fighting it really was a test of will, right? But I, I was reminded, you didn't put it on in a day, you're not going to take it off in a day. Uh, you got to fight this if you're going to do it. I think the same is true for us in our spiritual life as we're seeking God's direction, if we're wanting to find His plans for our life. Uh, many times we sort of get out of sync with his with his will, uh, and to find ourselves back in alignment really is uh, 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 us overcoming obstacles and fighting discouragement. And if we're going to find our way, we've got to be willing uh, to not grow weary in well doing, to not get discouraged when things don't go our way. Keep our eyes on Him and focused on on Him. Uh, so so trust in the Lord and His process. Fight discouragement. Third, take the next step. Take the next step. And this is this is so important. Uh, in in Alcoholics Anonymous, they say they say this. If any of you have ever had uh, have gone through AA or have somebody in your family that has gone through that, uh, one of the first steps, right, is do the next right thing. And I've I've always sort of loved that. Not just for someone that's battling addiction, but but for any of us, what great wisdom, right? If we could just do the next right thing in life, if we don't have to worry about making the next decision that's gonna, uh, our, our, our decision that's gonna shape what's going on ten years from now, we don't have to really worry about living our life right for the rest of our life. We just really need to do the next right thing, and if we can just keep doing the next right thing, taking the next right step, we're eventually going to get there. Sometimes I believe we get discouraged because we try to look too far down the road. And like God doesn't necessarily want us to see 10 years down the road and become consumed with what it's going to look like between here and there. He just wants us to take that next step, like here to there, three feet, just take that next step. And, and let all of this, what he said, don't worry about all of that. It's going to take care of itself. Don't worry about tomorrow. It's got enough problems of its own. Just do the next right thing. Take the next right step. Uh, really quick, God told the Israelites uh, to obey. They would be blessed, right? But what did they do? They worship uh, foreign gods, false gods. They uh, God allowed the Babylonians to come in and destroy the city to take them into captivity. Uh, the walls of Jerusalem were knocked down in a hundred for 140 years uh, during this round of them turning their back on God. Uh, the walls of Jerusalem were were destroyed and were down for 140 years. Um, and then this guy Nehemiah comes on to the scene and. Uh, uh, feels that God is calling him to rebuild these walls. One verse here, but when Samballot and the Hornite and Tobiah the Ammonite, official, the official in Geshem, the Arab heard about it, they mocked and, and, and ridiculed us. What is this you're doing? They asked, are you rebelling against the king? I answered them by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. We as servants will start building. I love that line. I've always loved that line. The God of heaven will give us success. Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to take the next step. We're just going to pick up one block at a time and start laying them down. God will bring us success. God will bring us success. Listen, don't worry about the success or the failure. 
Don't, don't worry about are you going to make it or you're not going to. Just worry about taking that next step. The success is in God's hands. St. Francis of Assisi said, start doing what is necessary, then what's possible, then suddenly you are doing the impossible. Just take that next step and watch how God will guide you into his purposes and your destiny. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. Lord, help us to make the best of it. We love you and thank you for the fact that you want to give us your direction in this life in your strong and mighty name. Amen.